Hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joseph, and though many of you already know this, I am a gay man. Why am I bringing this up now? Stay tuned to the end of the video and I will tell you exactly why. Welcome to today's Should You Pull video, or at least the first part of today's Should You Pull video, for the new story chapter in Decidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. That's actually going to contain two banners, and I'm going to go over them separately in videos because there's a lot to cover uh, just across these three characters that are coming out. So we have Arden and Maria in this video, and then we have Renoa's LD and the event itself coming in the next video, which will be part two of this little mini series series on this new story chapter. So if you want to stay tuned and find out more about Arden and Maria's rework and her realization, and then ultimately whether you should pull for Arden and Maria's banner, then stay tuned and keep on watching. As always guys, don't forget to check all the social media links in the description box below, including Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and Patreon. Twitch this week, I will of course be covering the new story chapter as it's released later in the week, and I've been experimenting with doing other games as well, like Street Fighter V, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Final Fantasy XIV, so definitely click on the link if you want to come and find me on there. On Patreon, I always shout out one of my Patreon followers every time I release a video so that I can show my appreciation to each and every person who decides to support the channel further, and today that person is going to be Wolfie, who has actually been a supporter of mine for a very, very long time now, so a massive thank you goes out to you and to everybody else on Patreon. Don't forget to check out all the websites that are, you can see around me just here in the description box below if you want any extra advice or help when it comes to playing to City of Final Fantasy or Promnia, and of course, don't forget to check out all of the other content creators that are out there besides myself. Now, as I said earlier, these banners that are coming with Arc 2 Final Chapter are a little bit odd in that there are two banners being released at once. So this video is going to cover Maria and Arden's full kit, whereas the second part of the video will cover Renoa's LD that will also feature and will also be released with the actual event information. So with this particular video, we're going to start with Maria. Now, Maria gets a heck of an overhaul when it comes to her rework. Now, Maria beforehand didn't really do a lot, being honest. Like, her entire shtick was that she had a little bit of healing in her ranged attacking kit. She did little buffs here and there. She was the first character that had any kind of trap mechanic with their EX, but ultimately she really didn't do an awful lot. However, her rework does an awful lot. So her proper shot uh, does a much, much higher brave hit count, going from three to five. It now has 50% splash damage, and it also guarantees you're gonna get an HP attack after use, because before, she could only do an HP attack once she, if she was at 80% bravery or higher when she finally finished the actual attack. And then Arrow Rain also gets a large number of hits added to it, being an AoE four hit attack, and then it also increases party bravery at the same time, so she's batterying on a lot of her stuff now, and she also gets more healing, more like all the stuff that she got before, but she now gets a new framed buff, which is anti-imperial force or power to rebel, as it's listed for the Japanese version here, which gives her a brave attack plus, which is a typical brave attack plus that party batteries, and it also raises the party's max bravery and physical damage by 30%. Now, her EX originally was, as I said, the first of its kind in that it had a trap mechanic. So it gave all targets explode, and it was a three hit brave HP attack that had splash damage. And it would also, if you've ever used Faris's AX, where you will do like the after the, the, the trap effect will do damage and then it will break them, whereas Maria's can't, which is actually beneficial in some ways, as you'll see when we get to Arden. And then it will part a brave it will battery the party. There's a lot of words there in order to kind of cater to the amount of damage that you dealt. So you'll get refunded bravery back considering how much damage she deals with the explode mechanic. Now her EX Plus, which is brand new, is gonna make things significantly stronger. So with just a book, it's gonna increase the hit count, it's gonna make sure that explode is affecting all enemies, and she also gets an HP Plus, which is a two hit brave HP that refunds bravery for her allies. It's okay, it's nothing special. She gets a massive stat boost from her one out of three, which is really quite big for her. She gets a recast rate up on her two out of three, which is really, really magnificent. 
And then she also starts with all of her her own buffs, so she gets her anti-imperial force or power to rebel, she gets brave regen, and she also starts with the attack up the, um, for the party that you would have gotten by using arrow rain. And then at 3 out of 3, it doubles in damage because it becomes a 6 hit brave HP delivered twice. It does 50% splash damage to, like, to non-targets on the first HP attack and the last HP attack, but the last HP attack includes the damage from the first one, so the damage is actually quite high on this. It also makes it so that explode, it Explode's effect makes it so that the amount of damage that it would deal is equal to the enemy's initial bravery, because originally it was only 20% of their initial bravery, then it got increased to 60% with just power stones, now it's 100%. And, it, and then your next ability use doesn't consume skill uses, which is great. And then she gets a Brave Attack Plus Plus and an HP Attack Plus Plus, which are just stronger versions of what she already had, so she gets a bit of Brave Overflow on it. But impo more importantly, she's able to just keep battering the party. Maria's kind of gone from nothing. I wouldn't say she was busted, but she's actually pretty solid considering how easy it is to build her kit. If you already happen to have her EX or you get it while you're pulling for Arden, she's a great consolation prize. She does decent damage, she's got a nice amount of healing in her kit, she's got batteries in her kit, she's got party-based auras, she's got a little bit of everything. I don't think that Maria is going to change the game anytime soon, but the fact that she her trap doesn't break or can't break the enemy is actually quite beneficial to Arden. So we'll have a look at, and other characters like him as well, and as we look at Arden, you'll start to see why. So now let's take a look at a character that I've been very excited for simply because of who he is, as well as a lot of players because people have seen that both Noctis and his counterpart in Arden are very, very strong damage dealers. And that's definitely true for our Arden here. Now, Arden functions quite similarly to Noctis, but not entirely in the same way, and he has a very unique mechanic that comes along with his LD that does set him apart from other damage dealers. Now, Warp Strike is a two-hit Brave HP attack that gets stronger and better, obviously, if you put your C55 and you have 15 CP weapons into it, but all you need to know is that a mechanic that Arden has is that he recovers bravery, like he refunds bravery if he breaks an enemy with a lot of his stuff, and that plays into one of his skills that comes later. He also has Spectral Charge, which may as well read Armaga. He starts with three levels, but he actually can increase this to five once he's got his EX+, plus. and as long as he has at least three levels, he does a follow-up attack in a very similar vein to Noctis, where he'll do a two-hit or three-hit Brave HP attack when, when you've got everything kitted out, after any pretty much any move that he does. Spectral Charge also increases his max bravery and his max brave overflow limit like for each level that he has. Aura of Darkness is an AoE Brave HP attack that gives him a new buff called Shadow Step. Now, Shadow Step is basically what Lightning gets when she uses her EX. If Arden breaks somebody, he gets a free turn immediately straight after where he can act again. And bear in mind that obviously, like, it, you know, where Noctis would manipulate his turn to sort of like position it in front of the enemy turn straight away, or like, as, or whenever their turn's about to come up, Arden just gets it there and then. He's not as patient as Noctis, he's just going to just go in and attack and over and over and over again. So the combination of having Shadow Step and Spectral Charge fully charged so that you're getting these follow up attacks, you're getting a lot of damage very very quickly out of Arden and then with Crystal Awakenings as you can see he gets four hits on Warp Strike he gets three hits on anything that comes out of the Warp Strike follow-up he gets an HP plus which we won't cover because it will come back we'll come back to it when he gets his HP plus plus with his EX and then Aura of Darkness he just gets more hits and um, you know more damage, all that kind of thing. His C65 is actually identical to Lightning's in that it, uh, it cancels break so that he can then break with something else and then get the Brave Refund, the advantages from Shadow Step, the free turns, all of that stuff. Now, his LD has a very unique mechanic. As you can see here, it reduces his HP to zero, but it doesn't kill him. It gives him a buff called Overkill, which basically keeps him alive at zero HP, and basically any damage that he takes, he's just going to go, yep, I'm, I'm immortal, it doesn't matter. Also raises his offensive stats quite nicely. Just be very, very careful taking him into a fight against anything that can dispel him. Because if Overkill leaves, it believes him on one. And you've just got to be very, very careful with that. Um, it also does a AoE Brave HP attack, single target HP splash damage, 50% splash damage. And he gets four uses of this. So once you've got... 
all of that together, like he gets nine turns of overkill after you've given it all the power stones and everything, you can make it so that Arden can really just take a beating and it makes it so that he's very, very good for soloing a lot of content because quite frankly, what is an enemy going to do like with the five or so turns they get in a row other than try and kill Arden when they can't? So that's the main kind of draw to Arden is that he's a big damage dealer. He can he gets the kind of the rebreak mechanics, he gets the free turns like lightning does, and he can't die. So but the, the the thing to bear in mind with this is that he can't die, his party members can. So if you're just gonna be taking a beating over and over and over again, this sounds really broken, and it is in certain circumstances. But don't rely on this in a typical party setup, because while he can't die, your other party members can, like I said, and your score's still gonna tank if they do. So just be very careful using this. Now Arden's EX is also really nice as well. Now it's another attack that cancels enemy break status, gives so that he can just break them straight away. It does brave HP AOE damage, it's split HP damage, which is a little bit sad, but understandable considering how much damage he does elsewhere. And he also gets the follow-up attack from Spectral Charge. If he's got at least three levels of Spectral Charge, it doubles the number of attacks that he does with it so that he gets that much more damage out of it. He also it, it makes um, the Spectral Charge last for longer whenever you're using Rising Phantom, its plus version, or the plus plus version that you get out of using a book in Ingots. And then taking a look at the EX plus version, with, with just a book, you can see here that Rising Phantom gives uh, Spectral Charge a extra couple of limit breaks, so it goes to, to a maximum stack of five rather than three. And obviously that means that he's getting more Brave Regen, more Brave Overflow, he gets more Max Bravery, he gets all of that stuff. Not only that, but when we get to the three out of three, you'll see exactly why we want five stacks of this. He gets stat boost from one out of three. He starts with his spectral charge at three out of five and he starts with shadow step at the start, which is great because it means he's not having to use his skills straight away if he doesn't want to. Um, but he, equally, you're able to get to stacks five really fast. Three out of three, he gets more brave overflow. It All versions of the attacks get an extra bravery hit on them. So if it's rising phantom, it's four hit brave HP. If it's rising phantom plus, it's four hit brave HP done twice. If you're at Spectral Charge 5, it becomes Rising Phantom plus plus, where it inflicts break on all enemies regardless of whether they're, they've got like 50,000 bravery, 5,000 bravery, they've already been broken, it unbreaks them if they have been broken, so all enemies will get broken, guaranteed, and it does 4 hit AoE brave HP 3 times, and it also makes it so his next skill doesn't take a skill use. So it means that Arden's longevity takes a massive boost from this. And then he gets a Brave Attack++, plus plus, which is a three hit bravery attack that if he breaks an enemy, he gets some of the bravery, but he gets more bravery again, so that when his Shadow Step kicks in, you get a harder hitting HP attack. But honestly, your know, HP++ plus plus is probably what you're gonna use out of the two, and it's a three hit brave HP attack, which is pretty standard for this point in time. It's got 150% max brave overflow. He, again, restores some bravery after if he inflicts break, and he gets the follow up attack as long as he has at least three levels. So basically, you've got Arden, who is like a weird blend of uh, like uh, Noctis, Lightning, and a little bit of Barsh, weirdly. Where he, he, but he's very selfish. He's he's like Lightning and Noctis. He's a quite a selfish damage dealer, in that he's just focused on I want to do big numbers. I'm going to break the enemy. I'm going to hit it really hard, and I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. The LD does make him very, very unique in that he has this undying mechanic where he can just go on and on and on. And his EX is really strong. Like it hits like a bus and it also just adds up with all of these turn counts that he gets. If he's unbreaking things and then breaking them straight away, you have to factor that into the total damage that he's going to do. And it's going to be a lot. The thing with Arden is Noctis just came out and 90% of players just pulled for him. I really want Arden because I think he's really, really cool and I think well, he's a villain so I'm obviously going to want him, but he's not as 
na mandatory for massive clears as Noctis is. He's different, so when Lufinia comes around, he'll be useful in slightly different scenarios than Noctis because his turn manipulation works differently in that he takes the turns immediately rather than waiting for the, the turn before the enemy. But he also doesn't give that benefit to his party members like Noctis does with his LD. He doesn't do anything really other than damage. He just does a heck of a lot of it. And then finally, with his burst, his burst is a 15 hit AoE Brave HP attack, so we're going back to AoE hits again. It cancels break after attacking, which is kind of nice. So it means that he's going to be able to take advantage of his shadow step even with his burst. And then the burst effect is pretty much the only party-wide thing that Arden really has, but it is kind of nice. It raises parties max bravery by either 10%, 30%, or 50%, and gives them a, a big brave regen at the start of his turns, and then... It's if the effect increases every time you break something. So realistically, you're going to get a break straight away because you cancel a break after the burst effect. And more importantly, you're getting more uses out of his LD. Now, he already has four uses of his LD. So having five is just a long, long time for Arden to not be able to die. So like I said, going over his kit already, I think that he's a fantastic damage dealer. He's got an extremely cool kit. He's a very cool character, and a lot of people are really going to want him, myself included. But speaking as somebody who just had to pity Noctis's burst, my resources are, like, hurting. And I'm sure a lot of people's are. And as much as I would love to grab Arden, if you already have Noctis, there's less of a need to grab Arden than you would think. So as I said for this video, I'm splitting it into two parts, so we're going to skip the actual event itself, and I'm going to put that into the second part of this video, which will accompany the second banner, which will include Renoa's LD. So for this type period in time, let's talk about whether we should pull on this banner, which contains Arden's full kit, as opposed to just the burst that Renoa's banner will have, and then it will also have Maria with her rework and her EX+, and also Lilla set with returning EX. Now, I would pull on this banner if I wanted a unique character in Arden with his undying mechanic, if I still had decent amount of resources after Noctis's banners, because Noctis did punch through a lot of our gems and our tickets, etc. Do bear in mind as well that we should be getting a lot of tickets with this particular event as well, because there is the, for, JP had a Chaos Co-op that if you did it enough times, you got 300 tickets for doing it. So you'll get a nice jump in resources straight away, just to be able to pull for Arden or some of the other banners that accompany him. If you want someone that can solo a decent portion of content, including the chaos for this event, I've seen Arden solos for this particular event as well, but do if, if you want to look more into Arden and whether he's for you, just search Arden solo on YouTube. He'll be able to do some like early DEs. He'll be able to do well, some not just early DEs, but some DEs in general. He'll be able to do quite a lot just by himself, just because of that undying mechanic. And... If, you know, like Noctis, big damage numbers make you happy, and Noctis doesn't scratch the itch on his own, because as busted as Noctis is, he's not the only character in the game that can do damage, right? So, if you just want a really strong damage dealer, Arden is gonna do the job. And honestly, Maria is a great consolation prize. I would not pull on this banner for Maria, because I don't think that while everything that she has is nice, there's nothing that really sticks out to me with her, apart from the fact that she's a nice trap-based character that has healing and bravery batteries in her kit. She doesn't scream to me like Leon or Alize or Gabranth do. She is really good though, so if you get her along for like while you're pulling for Arden, I'd definitely consider giving her the ingots. The, if you don't want to pull for Arden, then, or if, if Noctis just completely ruined your resources and you need time to recover, Arden's a great character, like really great. And he's like one of the strongest burst characters we currently have. But apart from his burst effects, he doesn't actually do an awful lot for your party, apart from just doing a huge amount of damage. It's a very large amount of damage, and the undying mechanic is extremely cool, but we just had a character that does an extremely e efficient amount of damage very quickly. So you don't necessarily need to pity two characters that do a similar kind of thing one after the other. Maybe wait for a while, recover some resources if you have to. I don't want to skip Arden. I really don't, because I love him. But it's difficult when you've had to spend 125k on a character's burst just prior. 
If, uh, as a side note as well, if you are looking for uh, for Arden's burst, consider waiting for Edward because he's like in a couple of weeks' time he's alongside Arden's burst as well, and he's a really strong support character. So if you want a character to pull for then, then Edward's a great character to be looking at. My current plan is that I'd like to because I do have a, quite a lot of tickets still. I, my my gems may have taken here, but I went straight into gems for Noctis. Is I'd like to try and ticket Arden's LD because I'm getting to a point. And I've obviously purchased premium mog passes before, where I'm approaching the point where I could get a burst from burst tokens. So if I was to get to a point like 50 burst tokens and I didn't necessarily like feel I had to save for another character like Kuja or Lightning or anything like that, I could go and get Arden's burst because it is really cool. And also, I could also try and get his EX with the X tokens. So maybe that's something that you guys wanna, might want to consider as well. Sound off in the comments below if you think that spending burst tokens on Ardin is a good idea, or whether you would just wait for Kuja, because on it or anybody else after that, because Kuja is obviously a biased thing for me. But it's something that I'm curious about, and I'd like be interested to hear what you guys' opinions on the matter is. So that's going to be all for today's video for Should You Pull for this particular chapter of part one. But I do want to make a quick thing about why I said what I said at the beginning of this video. Because normally when I do my little anecdotes about myself, they're more fun. This time around I wanted to say something a little bit more serious. Because I basically was accosted by somebody a couple of days ago um, who was relatively drunk, but I was working. I'm a waiter at the moment. I don't work at Square Enix anymore. Most people know that, but some people don't. I get a lot of messages asking me about it. I work as a waiter at the moment, and I had a customer who decided to get nasty with his words. Call me every word under the sun that would be related to a gay person. Um, I don't present particularly feminine, femininely. I'm not the most masculine guy in the world either, but this guy decided that he wanted to call me some very, very unpleasant words. And I was in a room of about 80 plus people and everyone there just stared at me. Like, just stared at me as if to go, okay then. Like, so this, it was like a show and I was disgusted, quite frankly. I left the room and I spoke to members of my family, members of my like, other staff members, all sorts of things. And I get quite heated about this, so do forgive me. <laughs> um, and everyone just said to me that it's something you should come to expect because you can't change people and you can't change the way the world is. And that actually upset me more than what had been said to me earlier. And the reason that I've said what I did at the beginning of this video, and to, it was like, it's not even a coming out, everyone's known that I'm a gay man for a long time now, <laughs> realistically, is because I want to sit there and say, no, do you know what? Sod that. I'm actually very proud of who I am. and. This goes out to everyone who watches my videos. There are certain words that you don't realize how hurtful they can be. Please, when it comes to, even if it's jovial, even if you're amongst friends or things like that, certain words, and I'm sure you guys can gather what word I'm talking about by this point, just don't say it. Because you don't understand how much impact it has on other people. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And I do apologize if that's a little bit more serious in tone than what I would normally say with those anecdotes, but it's something that I really wanted to get off of my chest and I hope you guys understand. Anyways, like I said, that's going to be it now for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be pulling for Arden, if you're gonna be pulling for Maria, how far you're willing to go to pull for Arden, because I'd really rather not pity another character. Thank you very much anytime soon. I've had two already in the last month and I don't want another one. <laughs> Um, and then obviously don't forget to share the video, like it, and then uh, sort of subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And then of course click that bell for notifications on any future Dissidia videos I might make. And stay tuned for part two of this little mini series where I'll be talking about Renoa's LD and of course the event itself. So that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you all very much and I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care.